blast from the past in the media again. Edmund Margini, he's back in the headlines courtesy of his latest police arrest. When you're a one-time Albanian cage fighter, <laughs> former member of a Lebanese street gang, and a CFMEU organiser, it's only a matter of time before the constabulary comes knocking on your door. Margini has a long, colourful history in the Australian underworld. He doesn't look like a cage-fighting union gangster. Snappy dresser is our Edmondo. He goes by his middle name, Monty. Excellent. That picture was taken in 2010 in his office, which was on the 18th floor of a Perth skyscraper. He was 32 at the time and speaking about an autobiographical film he was producing documented his life in the communist eastern bloc. It was to be called Life is War. Did you watch it? I don't know if it actually went into production. Mm. The spinning wheel of death on this website suggests something went wrong somewhere. The promo material at the time gave a brief plot synopsis starting with the line, Monty is a poor Albanian boy. Goes on to say, when his father is savagely beaten and taken by communists, he vows to follow his dream of freedom. The boy escapes to Czechoslovakia, where he grows and learns to survive, first with his wits and then with his fists. In 1998, the real-life Monty made his way from Europe to Australia, where he found work at the only place more dangerous than the communist Eastern Bloc, Paramount Nightclub in Northbridge. He was a bouncer there and apparently could handle himself. In one cage bout at Metro City nightclub, the 93 kilo fighter was facing off against a bloke who was 132 kegs. Did he win? Well, he survived. And if you're fighting someone that's 40 kilos heavier than you, then that counts as a win. It is absolute pandemonium. One person in the crowd was particularly impressed with Edmund's staying power. CFMEU heavyweight Kevin Reynolds liked the cut of Monty's jib so much, he gave him a job as an industrial relations officer. That's quite the career pivot. That's a common enough resume. Cage fighter from Albania becomes a shepherd in Greece before earning a living as a grave digger and subsequently fleeing to Australia to become a nightclub bouncer on the way to a career as a trade union organiser. Pretty standard. Really. In the early noughties, Edmund found himself mixing with the Sword Boys, so-called because the gang of mainly Lebanese chaps wore small scimitars around their necks. Sword! 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 And this is where we go three degrees of Australia's underworld. Your specialty? The bikies denied it, but the Sword Boys were in deep with the coffin cheaters. Edmund was with the Sword Boys around the time that the cheaters found themselves at odds with some common cheros in Sydney. We're told that was because a senior cheater had a run-in with then Como's boss, Mick Howie. What was the beef? I think we can use our imaginations. Mm. We will be very, very angry with you. And we will write you a letter telling you how angry we are. The disagreement saw the Como's firebomb the cheaters Bayswater clubhouse. And the Sword Boys, who shared Middle Eastern and Muslim heritage with Howie's gang, broke it a peace deal. You son of a bitch. This was all happening when Monty was training at this gym in Northbridge around the corner from Paramount Nightclub. The Aberdeen Street business was owned by Golden Gloves boxer Ray Fazio, who had his own running with the Coffin Cheaters after he went toe-to-toe with Troy McCanty and fellow bikey Darren Whitaker, who went by the nickname Jugsy. Said run-in, which played out in front of shocked restaurant diners in Subiaco, resulted in Ray's gym, where Monty trained, also getting firebombed. Lucrative time for professional arsonists. Very. I start fires! It was Fazio's film Two Fists, One Heart that inspired Edmund to produce Life is War, which, depending on whether he can fix the spinning wheel of death, could be coming to a low-rent cinema near you. Fast forward two decades and one massive shit fight involving a Perth office tower development and never proved allegations that Margini threatened to slit the throats of two building executives, he's again been brought to the attention of the constabulary. The now 46-year-old has been charged with offences relating to a 2011 home invasion in Rockingham. Took the cops a while. Detectives re-examined DNA from the scene using new techniques and found a genetic match with Edmund, allegedly. Defence lawyer Nick Skerry told court that Monty is a different man to the one involved in the aforementioned underworld adventures and should be given bail. Police said this leopard hasn't changed its spots and that he has a history of being a standover man for biking gangs who specialised in getting witnesses to withdraw their evidence. Well, a judge gave him bail. Which means he's home for the festive season. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.